Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. I, I mean, the whole movie. Insert, just pause this, insert the whole movie for the quote segment. And then, and then come back. And that'll be the quote for this episode. I never I was, voted for that. I was wondering what you were going to choose. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Indeed. And Jonathan. That's me. And this week we're talking about Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, this was Jonathan's pick. Mm-hmm. And before we get into it, as always, short and sweet, Luke, what did you think? I think from a historical or historic perspective, uh, this movie has implications. Okay, interesting, Jonathan. I don't know what that means. This movie's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, good movie. Surprising no one. It's a good movie. It's a classic for a reason. <laughs> it is an iconic comedy movie for a reason. Yep. Um, what, what implications? Can we just, let's just start with that. I just <laughs> feel like this movie, uh, this movie is the blueprint to so many other movies. Okay. Uh, and sure. so many other skits, so many other, you know. Yes, I mean, yeah. This movie does have problems for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I I think some jokes drag, and like uh, it it's uh, some of the dragging is played for a bit, and that's the point. But that's a hard line to toe, and sometimes I think it 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 falls on the wrong side of it a little bit for me. I'll be honest. It's I think I up. think the opposite. I think they could have dragged on the jokes a lot longer. Oh. I think that's a. I think that's just the clear differentiation between our thoughts on comedy. <laughs> I was just gonna like. I felt kind of the same on this watch, but then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I don't think that the issue is that it like. Every time I watch it with my friends, I never have that thought. But that, I had it this time because I watched it alone. That's fair. It, it, it may be because I've already seen the movie, and I'm like, let's just keep this going i think it's watching a movie alone especially a comedy when you watch a comedy alone it's it's just a completely different experience than when you Mm -hmm. watch a comedy with people Mm -hmm. i don't feel that differently when i watch movies alone or with people unless i am explicitly showing them the movie are you like are are you the type like me i don't know i'm i'm a fucking weirdo but i will like look over like oh, are they watching this exciting part what's the reaction like <laughs> if, if i'm showing them the movie probably yeah yeah I'm like oh here it comes um another thing i'll say about this movie is um so, so this is a thing i mentioned in the last three comedy episodes um and this this movie gets dangerously close to the wrong side of this line for me where um it's a comedy movie for the sake of comedy it's like it's a it's a collection of sketches because I mean they're a comedy troupe. It's very much a collection of sketches, uh, and the cohesive plot is kind of weak in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I've cited as something I don't love in comedy movies, and I think because this movie is very funny and there is enough of the um, cohesive plot, it's not a huge attraction. But it's like it's real close to that line for me. Also. Uh, this is definitely a parody on the classic Athorian legend. And you said that you hate parodies. Right? Uh, I think he said he hated I said I, I hate... I, I specifically was saying I, I don't like the, the modern parody movies. Okay. I specifically like uh, Meet the Spartans, Epic Movie, uh, Movie 43. Because I like Scary Movie 1 and 2, kind of. I like what, what exactly is movie forty three uh, parroting? Is that just it's it's like Hollywood in general? It's like it's a, it's about movies being made. Like I think I, I think all the actors are playing actors on sets. I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. When I when I, I I recently I think like two years ago I watched that movie, but I had never seen it before, and I remember it's not like good. a DVD ad looked like watching it and being like, oh, this should be good. This should be funny. Yeah, I, I don't I don't dislike parody in general. Okay. All right. I, must, I, I totally misunderstood that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think parody is is good if it's done well. Like um it, it's interesting too because like so this isn't even a parody of Arthurian legend 
that much. Like, depending on your definition of parody, like, it, it follows Arthurian legend, you know, not, sort of, yeah. not terribly unfaithfully. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, like, it, it does, it's, it doesn't follow the legends, like, to what the legends were, like, meant to be. No, I I, it's a comedy version of... Uh, like some, some some things like uh, Galahad being pure, like they took a trait and riffed on that. But like his Galahad, wasn't yeah. Uh, so there are definitely parody beats. I just mean the the overall story is yeah, like okay. you know he's got Excalibur from uh, the Lady in the Lake. He becomes the King of Britain. And they're the searching for the Holy Grail. Grail. Like that's that's just pretty solidly the story. Or at least that it is that story. There's so many Arthurian stories. Um, it, it's funny too. I, I'm at the same time, uh, just sort of by coincidence, I'm reading T. H. White's The Once and Future King, which is also an Arthurian like sort of comedy telling of Arthurian legend. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm very in this zone at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know. I I think like. Even the, the search for the Holy Grail is said a lot, but it's mostly just an avenue for them to move to the next place, but not by, like, logical threads. I, or not always by logical threads. I guess sometimes it's by logical threads. Like, they're just going to random places searching for the Holy Grail a lot of the time. Yeah. Not really following yeah. clues. And and I felt like the the inter not even intermissions but like a lot of the it's it's kind of hit or miss when it comes to the uh the animation. Like half of the time I was like this is great and the other half of the time I was like end me. I like I like the framework. The 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 framing device of the animations in the book. I didn't think too much of them. I thought they were like fun, but I don't know. I didn't like think too hard about it i guess did you guys keep track of uh laughs as you watched this time i don't think i laughed like i also loud. didn't laugh but um uh, again tell me, I think watching it alone is watching like, it alone is a huge thing for this and for uh like crowd pleasers it's the same kind of thing but uh i don't feel like i laugh more or less with other people i do this this i definitely do but I have to say this, that credit sequence, the second half at the beginning, not a fan, definitely was... The credit funny. sequence does go on long. At the beginning where they switch it to the, yeah. you know, the flashing cut, like, no, not about it. And I also have notes here of, haha, do you get it? They have coconuts and yet it's 980 in England. Do you get it? Ha ha. Yeah. It, it's a, it, this movie's interesting because it's doing uh, a lot of like, different comedy styles. That's, that's one of my favorite. Like the, the I loved that. every like I love the fact that they were an, overanalyzing stuff. I love that kind of uh, humor. Yeah, um, there's I mean there's so there's slapstick, there's analytical humor, there's like jokey foley work. Um, you know there's there's playing around format, breaking the fourth wall. Um, there's sort of dry humor. Like there's a, there's a lot going on. It's not a movie that is just doing one type of humor. Like so, yeah. we talked about a few comedy movies now. Um, you know, Mouse Hunt is basically doing slapstick humor and not a whole lot else. Um, other guys is doing, I, I guess, you, raunchy humor. Is that how you would classify it? Like, it, you know, it's doing. I think its there's thing. a lot of there is some over analytical humor. There's a bit of dry humor in there. What? But I agree that it's mostly raunchy. We, uh, we cannot possibly tread this road again, so I'm just going to move past what you said. Um, I don't know how to classify Lego movie. I guess Lego movie is parody humor. Also, there's like witty. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of breaking. different things in Lego movie as well. But like so like but for the most part, you know, movies do like one or two thing for this for their main in a, a comedy movie. I should say does like one or two thing for their main. Uh, humor point and this movie is really all over the place because it is again it is a comedy troupe that is very familiar with comedy and just doing whatever they want 
Um, and I think that works to their benefit in a, in a lot of ways. I agree. I also like, uh, I, I, I really like the, um, I don't know how to say it, like the framework of just having a bunch of skits. Like, I haven't seen too many comedy movies go that route, but it makes it so much easier to have, like, a more fluid, fun, like, you only get the best parts, connect the bits with some, like, plot thread. I'm into that. I, I think it just works way better. Because, like, a lot of the times in comedy movies, I'm like, oh, like, this is just so, like, you have to stretch your imagination so far for, like, why things are happening the way they're happening. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think, this movie... so, th this is an important thing, and, and it, 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 again, it goes back to my mentality with comedy movies that I talked about, where I need a cohesive thread. Um, I'm actually, so I'm going to liken it to Back to the Future. Um which is maybe a confusing comparison, but I will explain. Uh, so Zemeckis and... Fuck, what's the other guy that worked on Back to the Future? Spielberg? No, it's not. Spielberg um, supported them, but he's, he's not the other person that actually worked on it. His name is also Bob, but whatever. Um, other guy, he's not listening, so it doesn't matter. He won't be insulted that I don't remember his name. Um, the way that they wrote Back to the Future is they, they had a general idea of what kind of was going to happen. The idea of, like, you know, uh, seeing your parents in this time and in the weirdness that's going on. And then they thought of scenes that would just be cool. So, like, they thought, like, oh, what if Marty played the guitar? And what if, um, you know, wh whatever scenes, they, they were like, this sounds cool. And then they, they were like, cool, we've got these scenes that we want. Now we need to earn them. We need to make sure that our narrative threads lead to that point and we have earned that scene, otherwise we don't get to put it in the movie. And as a result, Back to the Future is a great movie with very good scenes that are set up. I would say, yeah, you, you couldn't tell that it was like crafted as, at least when, you know, I haven't watched it in a while, but yeah. Yeah, uh, and it, it makes for a great movie. And so like, I think the the notion of building a movie around sketches is certainly functional. I don't think they do it perfectly in this. I think some of it definitely feels disconnected for me and just they wanted to get to the next sketch. Uh, but it still does it pretty well. I think I would, you know, you, you could watch like three episodes of Chappelle's show and get like a very similar thing going on mm -hmm. if you took like the correct scenes that it kind of like works together. Yeah, I don't know. I just... uh Bob Gale, I, that's the other man. For me, with a comedy, the plot just really does not matter too much. It's nice when it's there, but if it's not there, I don't super care. But like, I don't also, I also don't like stand up too much. Uh, I just haven't seen too many that I like very much enjoy. Um, but that's the problem with stand up is there's no cohesive. It's just here's a joke, here's a joke, here's a joke. I mean, some some stand up is cohesive. So but like, it, that's why the best ones are cohesive. That's, that's why I like skits. Though skits are i feel yeah. like are the perfect but so fun. do you sit down and watch two hours of a collection of skits or do you watch skits individually i think i, I would say i would I say... definitely have done i've sat down and watched like three hours of skits on youtube yeah like past. uh oh you know like pitch meetings right right but yeah. okay so those aren't it's it's a different thing you didn't sit down for a two-hour thing I would you just it. jumped from skit to skit I would do it if it was market like if it was packaged that way. Like I yeah, okay, so so actually pitch meeting is a good example. They have like I think videos that sort of approach an hour long that is like all the MCU skits in chronological orders. And that is very much a collection of skits, but it is I guess it's not planned to be referential within itself because he doesn't harken back to movies that much, but he does sometimes. But like I don't know. I, I just think it's better when there is a narrative thread tying things together, at least for me, rather than just a collection of here's the thing, here's another thing. Don't think about how we got here. I get that. I'm not the same way, but I, I see where you're coming from. I, I don't I don't think it like makes the movie like terrible, but it it you know, it's definitely better to have it all threaded together like i said it's nice when it's there but if it's not there i don't think that it's like uh, i i will not like this movie yeah or even most, like, i, I most think i think it hurts the movie together 
to me most movies are thrown together especially comedy movies and then like some really bad like action or drama movies are like this happens and then this happens and yeah that's that's happens. exactly what i'm talking about it's not it's not, it's not exclusive to comedy but it, it is prevalent in comedy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um like musical comedy is a, a perfect example of this like i wouldn't want to watch a musical comedy that is just back-to-back songs with next to no cohesion like songs in a musical comedy are almost like individual skits right but there has to be a plot pushing you from song to song Sure. I agree. That's that's how I feel about this in general. Like I I I want that narrative thread, or it hurts the movie for me. I guess I'll I be know. honest. I don't think none of y'all like comedy, though. What? You don't think we like comedy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I just think I, I think it's very it, it's it's weird. I feel like it's just been weird. Comedy is is hard to review. Comedy yeah. is hard to like analyze it's also the hard to pin down like what you find funny about it or don't find funny about it like for me a lot of jokes and the other guys didn't land um and it felt like random for the sake of random but then jokes in lego movie and this like landed for me but i actually think that i found what makes or breaks it for me like any given skit or joke and for me what it is is i think that it has to have an overlaying premise that is either uh like relatable and like uh, like for example i guess lego movie had a lot of just like very clever uh tropes that it played with and characters that it played with like the badass but it was like what if the badass was just like a teenager going through a sort of phase like trying to be better and that what, what like, you, all of the jokes framed that? around her you're talking about wild whatever oh, the fuck yeah wild is. style so it's like I all the jokes heard. framed around her for me were funnier just like inherently because of that premise and i feel like monty python like every joke has that underlying like goofiness to it where it's either playing on a societal like little gag or like it has like an over, like an underlying thing that just makes it like you're right they're just like taking a piss on something larger but they never like state it really or if they do it's like they don't make they don't really make a commentary about it like the guy who's like uh i didn't vote for you you're not my king like that entire skit is like sort of a a joke about somebody who's like really vocal about politics but they never like say one way or the other it's just like it's just inherently funny because like it has that level of like that extra level like you have the goofiness of the joke itself but then you also have the goofiness of like oh, I know a person like that. Or even just like, oh, God, like, yeah, like, he's, you know, he's out here spitting the truth, but he sounds like a crazy person. Like, you know, there's just, like, there's that little, like, level of something more. And I think that that is really what, like, makes something funny for me. I don't know if, to me, that that's what made that scene funny, but I do agree that it's a funny scene. (laughs) I don't know if it's, like, what makes it funny, but I definitely think that, like, the reason why like dear vagina was just like yeah okay is because like it didn't like have anything else going for it other than the fact that it itself is like a goofy thing i I was so confused for like three seconds because i when you said that my brain processed it as d-e-a-r like a letter and i was like what the fuck is he talking about (laughs) see and that could have been in the movie it would have made it better for for (laughs) No, I, but uh, that, honestly, that would have. Yeah, it would have been an iteration on the joke. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, to me, I don't know if it necessarily has to go like, "Oh, there's so many layers to this joke." Um, I just think it was funny. Okay. With uh, the "I didn't vote for you" thing, and I, I think maybe I'm that guy. I don't know, but. Yeah, I thought it was a funny scene. I thought the funnier, the funnier scenes to me were in the beginning, though. If we had to like classify the first about, like fifteen minutes, what about the bridge crossing? Uh, what is your name? What is your quest? What is I don't know. The I, 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 last day of the Laden Swallow. 
Yeah, which brought it back to the beginning. But I or, but I thought it was funnier when they brought it back to the beginning with the French uh, <laughs> guys at the end there. Yeah, that was pretty good, too. I also like how they sent back the... Uh, they catapulted the uh, yeah. Tro- Trojan uh, bunny. <laughs> so they're like, oh, good thing we weren't in there. Yeah. Uh, just a great movie. Oh, the science scene. <laughs> Who are you who is so wise? <laughs> Why is the science? They're all the the entire movie is just so great. Yeah, I don't know. It is a good movie. It's true. So has comedy month maybe taught any of you guys like do you get like what makes a joke work for you or not work for you? I feel like I learned nothing because we picked four movies I'd already seen. very well i mean i had already seen all but the other guys i don't know i uh um i would say i don't really need to analyze it very much and i'm into more random shit you know what i mean sure i don't i don't i mean dissecting the frog never works out really um what do you mean what what do you mean ed you've never heard that uh it's a phrase talking about a joke is likened to dissecting a frog all at the end all you end up with is a dead frog i've never heard that it just it it ruins the joke essentially like you might understand it better but you're never gonna get the frog back (laughs) like haha do you get it i don't know as an example you know there's a great youtube video um, about microsoft bimbos what? That I highly recommend, but it does ruin that meme. Michael Soft Bimbos. You said this like this is a meme I should already be familiar uh, it's, with. It's it's a like a twenty year old meme, but it's basically like a. It's on those like knockoff type of memes where it just looks. Like instead of Windows, it's B I N B O W S, and instead of Microsoft, it's Michael Soft. And we, it's like a we should board. we should have an official moratorium in this Discord server of assuming everyone knows the meme we're about to reference. But anyway, it is uh, um, an amazing video, but it is one hundred percent that it is dissecting the frog to like the maximum level of dissection. And and to be it's clear, like a thirty I, minute YouTube video. It's not in it, like you should be able to discuss comedy, and you can even discuss why. Uh, a joke works but if you just get too far into it i think is when you reach dissecting the frog territory well i'm just i'm not talking about any specific joke i'm just talking about why any joke in general works for me is i think that it has to have some sort of cleverness or some sort of like larger um larger thing going on that makes it funny like something something random isn't inherently funny Something surprising isn't inherently funny. It's got to have something that it's like either just like making light of, or or just being kind of kind of relatable or clever in a way that isn't obvious. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's also it's helpful to me to have some sort of anchor in the plot as well. Like, um... it makes it more funny. Yeah, it yeah <laughs> it makes it work better within the movie for sure yeah interesting so like um so the 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 original swallow scene in this movie right is mm-hmm. it's touching on the random side right but it's still it's still lightly anchored in the you know bringing the coconut and then the reference back to the swallow scene you know we get it is now anchored it's officially part of the plot Whereas if something just comes out of left field, like random, it's like, you just wanted to say that. Like deer vagina. It's like, you just wanted to say deer vagina. Uh, Maybe the first time, but that could be said for the swallow as well. The very first time they talk about the swallow. But the swallow is bringing the coconuts. The coconuts are just, well, even the coconuts aren't just a random thing though. Like that's the thing about this movie. So if you take each individual part, it, it seems random. Like... Why are they having a conversation about birds? Oh, it's because of the coconut. And you're like, what? why is there a coconut? It's like, well, it mimics the horse hooves because they're knights and they don't have a horse. 
Like it, it flows together in a way that works for me. Here's the thing. When he gets arrested at the end, I feel like that is weak. Yeah, but uh, that's actually like, that's a larger Monty Python. Riff. And here's why. And here's why. Because he was never on a horse. What? He was never on a horse. What does that have to do with him getting arrested? Because the man who killed uh, the guy, he was on a horse when he killed him. The reporter. Oh, um, well. Either way. Therefore, you know. My, my point I don't, is... I don't think that that's why it's weak. I think it's weak because that is... Uh... I mean, Monty Python, that's how, like, they end a bunch of their sketches, like, as a comedy troupe, is when they don't know how to end it, they get arrested. Yeah, so my, my point is, like, all those elements, they flow together, they work in the plot. And that works for me. And I think it's good. It, it also, it doesn't help when something is, like, extremely referential to a level, like, we talked about this with uh, Shaun of the Dead, the music record scene, like, if we don't know those bands, that joke has zero chance of landing. Yeah. And then it is just a scene that is just, while it's still serving something, you know, they're trying to figure out how to kill zombies. It, it is, it's never going to be as effective as you want, no matter the case, because it, it simply cannot. It is impossible for it to be. Yeah. So, yeah, but at the same time, if you, if you did get the reference, though, it, it's made a, a lot funnier. So I think comedy, you know... Yeah, I mean, it's a dice something. roll. I just think that, that is a, yeah. that's a bigger gamble it's than a, you maybe ought to really take. Big, <laughs> yeah. I'll agree with that. But yeah, I don't really have much more to add. I don't know. You could talk about the rabbit. Well, I think Jonathan wanted to talk about comedy in general and why things work and don't work. And that I was... think he wanted to talk about the rabbit. Well, we Should can we talk about the rabbit. rabbit. What, yeah. what do you have to say about that rabbit? I thought he was funny. So that wasn't the actual nasty monster under there. That was the other thing, right? No, the rabbit was the monster. <laughs> what about the other monster that was in that same cave? That was just another monster. Because uh, Tim, the sorcerer, which... Again, oh, excuse you, <laughs> Tim the Enchanter. Oh, my bad. Yeah, Tim the Enchanter. Because, uh, like, when he said that that was the monster, like he had seen people get killed by the rabbit before. Also, I love the Book of Armaments because it it does sound like a fucking <laughs> a book of the Bible. Well, oh yeah, that's you know this point. this goes something you're like oh they're very subtly. Uh, you know, but it's like when it when it comes to the religious folk in this, they are not subtle about like their opinion on these people are idiots. I think everybody's an idiot in that movie. But... Yeah, there is no intelligent character in the movie. Yeah, I I, mean, I, the, I guess the, Arthur the, the, kind the of Chanter. is. Nah, I mean, even the 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 uh, Knight of the Round Table, who was like supposed to be smart, was the dumbest, and that was like the joke. That was the riff. I don't think Arthur ever does anything, like, super dumb. No, no, not Arthur. Uh, no, I know. I'm just saying, like, I think Arthur is a, is a fairly... He's, like, a level-headed character in the movie. I don't think the Enchanter does anything dumb. Yeah, but other than that, everyone else was super dumb in the movie. Uh, the bride-to-be doesn't do anything dumb. Hey, but she doesn't do anything smart. She's she doesn't do anything. <laughs> She just kind of has her entire family killed. <laughs> oh, oh my god. When he's running towards them, and then it cuts away, and then he's in the, rain, he's in the same spot. Oh, it just loops the same scene. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's there. Oh my god. It uh, gets me every time. I didn't laugh, but I sat there, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So wait, what, 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 why'd you bring up the uh, rabbit? I just want. I just said something random, and it um, made me laugh. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. To to go into just sort of comedy and why it works and why it doesn't like the 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 just strictly so random. I don't know that it works for me. Like there are probably I mean, the, some cases where it gets me, but I think for the most part, it just doesn't work for me. 
great, I mean, but I'm saying for me, well, after, after you, Luke, I've been talking a bit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think the random, the rabbit is literally the definition of, you know, that's so random. Um, yeah, to some extent, it's also playing the expectation of like this big horrible monster, just instead of being a rabbit. But I, I don't find the rabbit scene particularly like, like it, I don't, it doesn't rank for me in like the funniest scenes in the movie. I guess that's what I'm trying to solve because when I, I think... watched this movie, because basically the Lego movie, you guys pointed out that it had lull random humor, but I didn't think that. And so then when I watched um, the other guys, I thought that it had lull oh, yeah. random humor. It does. And... I feel like you have to have some randomness yeah. to, for it to be funny, but I and don't that's... think that's a bad thing. Yeah, agreed. And that's why I was saying, like, I think what makes humor for me like the difference between lol random and this is random yeah i think there's a difference between like unexpected versus lol random yeah what's that difference for you it's is it like entirely the plot like so the plot is the die hard difference between lol random and maybe like so i don't consider the rabbit lol random it's unexpected but like you can see the purpose there right like they're expecting this big horrible monster there is a rabbit there. It is the monster. Like, it's... I, I, but by seeing the purpose... Like, Deer Vagina is lol it's random. It's like seeing... By seeing the purpose, it's like seeing the guy behind uh, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> like, the guy behind the curtain. Sure. Uh but okay, but like, no, but yeah, like the deer vagina is gone. strictly lol random. Absolutely. And that to me is a bad joke. But see, you can't see where it's going. It's not going anywhere. Oh, it's going places. It's not. It's just, it's just lol random. Um, and the, the rabbit's maybe not a great example because I again it doesn't rank for me in the funny as the funniest scenes. Um, I just don't think it's like lol random. So I have a question for you. Why did Lego Movie feel lol random? When I feel like a lot of the jokes, while being very random, had an element of cleverness or like commentary about it. I think Spaceship Guy is lol random to his core. I think I disagree. Really? I kind of disagree with that, but I'll uh, I'll let you continue. Cause so, you, cause you didn't like the I mean, movie. The only thing that's the only thing that's lol random about him is that he's eccentric about spaceships. He just like he he, he serves nothing. What? He just he just he, he he his whole existence is just to keep saying uh, spaceship. It's like the I mean, it's, it's on, like this absolutely. It's like Portal Two Space Core, right? I thought that was funny, but Portal it's lol random. Funny. But Portal 2 is a classic. Yeah, it's a good game, but it doesn't mean it has no lol random scenes. Uh, I don't know. So this this is the thing. I, I think if you take... This is why I think comedy is so fucking hard to do. Uh, to right, like, and everyone's going to gonna have different is, preferences. Yeah, exactly. People my my opinion on comedy is not also, what is comedy... Like, what makes comedy good. It is what makes comedy work for me. Anyone's there. opinion on comedy is purely subjective and anyone trying to be like well this is no i like this because objectively it's this it's like no no like there even when you try to like boil it down i think a joke can be are... objectively clever but that doesn't even make yeah, it objectively yeah. funny yeah i mean there's a lot of jokes that are like objectively like insanely intelligent like uh, futurama is a great example i love futurama but some of their jokes are like so like probably during that time, three percent or less of uh, Futurama's audience actually like understood. Like, oh, it's coming to a quantum finish. Well, there's yeah, they, uh, there's they observed it. They changed the outcome. There, yeah. there's <laughs> famously the the Har Harlem Globetrotter scene where they switch uh, bodies uses a that real mathematical won, solve yeah. uh, to figure out the problem. Incredible. Such a such a great scene, and it serves. I agree, but I didn't think nothing. That was funny. Yeah, it serves nothing. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I did not think it was funny. It was a it was an awesome 
thing that happened but again yeah i totally agree i did not think that scene was funny in the least but that that's a lot of the later futurama episodes i feel like they even if they get the intelligence right they don't get the funny right but if they do get the funny right they don't get the intelligence right so it didn't really feel like futurama but now we're just going way off topic yeah Yeah. but by the way why i brought this up i'm not trying to say like i'm not trying to get to the objective core of comedy but i do want to get to the core of what you guys find funny because i mean that's what we're doing this that's why we're recording this is to just get our subjective experience out there and i think i've nailed down my like subjective comedy funny bone like that's why i like puns it's just because they have a cleverness to them rooted in in your traditional sense of what a word is and now it's subverted and that to me is funny like i i just i think that they're inherently like every time that there's anything that has to do yeah (laughs) but uh jonathan um i have good news for you you should like foreign films more yeah yeah because uh for i don't know why but in the united states and like the uk puns are like seen as this like lower like really shitty humor and i have no problems with puns at all but like for some reason in this country like puns are under attack constantly don't i know it i say them all the time and people roll their eyes and i i embrace it but like if if you were to go to an a bunch of Japanese games have like hidden puns in all sorts of stuff. I know if you haven't played Nina Kuni, for example, that game literally is just all puns. Like Oh the Pokemon too. Pokemon is full of puns. But then um but Nino Kuni is like literally like everywhere. Like yeah, you get one like every three trainers you say might say like a little pun here or there. But like the cat puns in Nino Can in Nino Kuni are insane. Like they're just unheard of. Yeah, I like I like puns as well. Although I I enjoy them wrong. I would say for me, it's it, the puns aren't really a, an exercise in humor. I I like to just sort of I I like the sort of etymological aspect of like figuring out what is the pun more than I find it funny. And the other thing is, like, you know Wario and Waluigi, they're both puns, right? Yeah. Like, Mario just is the name of the guy, but, like, Wario means, like, bad guy. And Waluigi means bad Luigi. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, I mean, puns are everywhere, just not not in the U.S. They're definitely from the puns. Yeah. Somebody needs to construct a uh, a Broadway show constructed only of puns. Call it a play on words. There you uh, go. Yeah. Yeah. But so you said that you could see... Michael Soft Bimbos is actually a pun, and it's deconstructed thoroughly in this YouTube. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. I won't yeah. check it out. But yeah, back to back to what you were talking about, Luke. You said that this was like a framework for other movies. What do you mean? Well, you said it. Oh, yeah, yeah, like definitely. <laughs> I wouldn't even say it. It took me a second. But yeah, yeah. I, I would say less movies. But like there are so many uh, sketch comedies that I feel like take direct inspiration from this. And especially like uh, I feel like some UK comedies that I've watched. It's exactly this. I don't know, but like one of the ones, and I'm glad because I had not seen like any Monty Python, but I've been shown like clips before this, right? And I remember telling an English guy that I thought uh, Whitest Kids You Know was basically like Americans trying to do Monty Python, but with like millennial humor and he was like oh no no no!" like he watched like three episodes like really because i've always thought of monty python as that type of humor and i am 100 percent correct in that assumption that that show is definitely like 
the sketch comedy in that show, in my opinion, is exactly the same. I would say it's like close to a ripoff. But yeah, like, I mean, what are the cores that it has that you feel like it took uh, away? that it took away from it? Uh, I would say you have the ridiculous, um, like this is in the wrong era type stuff. They have that. They have the whole like using using props or like not having something and like pretending. I know there's a scene where they're like opening uh, an alien up and there's like skittles inside of it right so they're opening i don't know why it made me laugh but the sketch they're like opening the alien up and i don't remember very much about it i watched it when i was like 14 but they open it up and just skittles start and they're like analyzing the skittles like oh, one red skittles and like, i don't know it, it just to me like it feels very similar Yeah, I definitely yeah. think everything tries to be at least a little bit like this totally this this made humor faster, I think. Yeah. From comedies that I've seen like before, like slapstick was probably the fastest humor out there. But like uh -huh. the joke, but, but like, like slap actual... slapsticks is slapstick for the most part to me is is the worst of all. Like slapstick and uh oh, I like think you, I think you have some good you can have good slaps. Like I, I just think it's it's like what we said for uh Mouse Hunt. Like I don't like that type of humor. I for me Mouse Hunt didn't work like, because I don't like modern slapstick and I know that you guys kinda of put me on blast for this because like I don't want actors to do dangerous things, but for me it only is funny if there is like an element of like, oh my god, that actually happened. But I, I don't know. It, it's like Jonathan this, right? just wants people to die. That's <laughs> not at all. I don't like the the physical comedy element. Um, for the most part, I don't like it's it's like a situational comedy where like, haha, look at what in a horrible situation this guy is in. Like in a, uh, like National Lampoons. A lot of them were like that. I don't like that. Like, I don't like to. I don't know. I, I just feel sad for the character in the case of uh, like a lot of National Lampoons in the case of a lot of... And like, yeah, you know they're like assholes or whatever, but it's still just like, this is making me uncomfortable. It's it's the same thing with Miles Hunt. Yeah, my least favorite is like awkward cringe humor, like socially awkward situations that are played for laughs where it's like just like the max level super cringy. I'm just like, I'm not enjoying this on any level. I mean, if you like The Office... That's like all the office is. There are some parts of the office I super don't like. Like if I ever rewatch the office, I would skip Scott's tots. I you skip episodes, like I literally can't watch a single episode of that show without like skipping through a lot of moments. Oh yeah, there there would be moments I'd skip to. I, I but I would skip the entire episode <sighs> of Scott's tots. Like Oof. I've all I'm trying to say is I've had bosses that were like that who like thought they were everyone's friend but it was just like i fucking hate you and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and that's like the vibe i got from like the two episodes i've watched of the office that i just i couldn't watch it was triggering me reminding me of a boss i had that was just the worst and like this should be included in a comedy what what happened in my situation right he uh was going to write me up right and they recently introduced a system on his computer that, like, you have to type in the write-up, right? I think he, he said know, that. He didn't know how to use a computer. Mm -hmm. I had to write my own write-up. <laughs> like, write the whole thing out. And he was like, uh, how do you do this? And I'm like, fuck, dude, you're, like, not even that old. You're, like, 45. And anyway, I made the write-up. Like, it's basically a glowing review of me. But it, like, <laughs> still, I was so mad that this dude like was so incompetent and yet was like four ranks above me. That's how it be. And not not just like a little incompetent. Not like this is like comical to like you would actually see it in a comedy and be like that could, wouldn't really happen. <sighs> like you wouldn't have someone like four 
you know like literally like you have you're a line cook then the cook then the supervisor then the manager like and then the manager of the property or whatever you wouldn't think like okay it, i don't know in the in the movies you see like yeah the property manages managers like stupid because of this or this and doesn't take his employees seriously or whatever but this is like complete incompetence where if this happened in a movie i remember thinking like i wouldn't believe this or if this were like in a movie like this is some crazy fucked up shit makes for a great story though. another another story this dude we worked at a jail he was giving you know he was the food guy decided one breakfast that they should get a single half granola bar everybody that's all they get a half granola bar and we were all trying to walk him like down like talk him down like no 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 no. it doesn't and he's like oh but the 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 lunch is going to be you know 300 calories more so that evens itself out and we're like but it doesn't matter because that's what's in front of them is going to be this giant like food plate because all the food plates are the same and then every they get sent down washed and then new food is put on them right Mm -hmm. and we're like but that's all that's on this food plate and that's all they're going to be thinking about unless you write a note individually that like the lunch is going to be much bigger today (laughs) they don't care and it literally started a riot within the prison and we had to stay there for 24 hours because if there's a riot going on we can't leave Jeez. but yeah that's all i gotta say about that i feel like if there ever was a place where uh people that incompetent would work i i would guess a prison would be one of them that and like a nuclear nuclear holding site i, I don't like. even want to i don't even want to look up what the guy's working on now And also, he gave me a check for like six hundred dollars one time, and he's like, "This is the most money you're ever gonna make." And I was like, "What?" The dude was just the shit that would come out of his mouth. Like he would say like racist shit to random people, and it's like, "Do you not see what like? Do you first of all, this is wrong, and you shouldn't have said this. And secondly, you said this." like in a way that was like making fun of black people and you literally said it to a black person to their face and you could clearly see that it made them upset like they're they made a frown and you just continued talking as if it was no big deal i don't know this this dude was like horrible but yeah is it still the monty python episode well, I think this is the Luke's job Venting, story yeah. corner of uh, whatever. But anyway, was. I I just think that could be made into a comedy. <laughs> That's all. There we go. The swallows were good. I did. I liked the swallows. I had no problem with it. But I think everything leading up to the swat, like. I don't like the part before that in the bridge, and I don't like... uh, I don't know if I really like the Enchanter. Really? I think it's more funny once you know that this movie couldn't afford horses because they decided... They blew, like, I think over 50% of their budget on those pyrotechnics (laughs) for a subpar joke. And so, like every time, every time he's pointing, the pyrotechnics he's don't them. even serve a joke. He's just doing them. Uh, yes. They're they're fireworks. If you if you listen really closely, you can tell they're like, yeah. Well, some of them are like the the fire. There's fire that goes up, but yeah, you know, it, it makes it funny. Like if you, and that's maybe a joke that is a bad joke, but I think it's funny because I know it is. Like if you know how much money they spent on that just for him to fucking do it like it's just so dumb and oh it's so good just to watch them him just point and blow away like thousands of dollars per point maybe not thousands but like hundreds it's pretty funny to me at least (laughs) 
Yeah. So why didn't you like uh, Tim the Enchanter? Just he didn't really do anything that I found that funny. He's just a bad Merlin. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I did like when he said, "Some call me Tim." I did like that. That was about it. I feel like Tim is a good name as well. It's in. It's just a little bit goofy because you're expecting something a yeah, little like bit like whimsical. Merlin or yeah. oh, nope, Tim. Tim. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we're about ready to <laughs> uh, vote this up. Yeah. All right, Jonathan. What are you giving it? Me? I'm going first. He, he did ask I'll you. Go, I'll go first. Uh, no, I mean, I can. I can go first. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> Um, a spreadsheet. I don't know. I'm tempted to give it a ten. If the only reason that you would watch it again and again and again, and that you would continue enjoying it, then I believe it. It definitely warrants a ten. Yeah, I might give it a ten. The only reason I might that I'm thinking not, and I I, I guess I'll ask you guys: Is this watch probably wasn't a ten? But I think next watch could be if I watched it with people. Do you think that makes it a ten? I mean, I think that's I a know. question for yourself. Yeah, that's if you believe it's a 10, then it's a 10. I think I'm going to give it a 10. This is a great movie. Luke, what are you giving it? Well, I feel like I give out these two scores a lot, but it's between a 7 and an 8. <laughs> <laughs> you give out um, 7 a lot. I guess you have quite a few 8s. Uh... I don't know that there was parts of it that I thought was funny, and there are other parts where I was like, my eyes were drawn away. And to me, I think it does hurt it that it's not all one cohesive thing. I feel like if, though, if I watched this movie when I was like 14, it would probably be a 10 for me. I think I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay, I'm between an eight and a nine. Only you can answer that. I think I'll give it a nine, which I believe makes it tied for the highest score now, maybe. Wow. No, he gave it a seven. Yeah. No, I think it. I no, think it's that's... it's tied. It's the exact same scores as your name, which Luke oh, gave okay. a ten, you gave a nine, and I gave a seven. Oh, one thing to mention about this movie is I remember watching it when I was, like, very, very young, like, super young, like, maybe nine, maybe younger, with, like, my parents, and my dad thought that this was super funny, and I was, like, very confused and thought it was very not funny. <laughs> like, I remember, well, I, the bring like... I remember the bring out your dead scene, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, this is does... and depressing. <laughs> It does require some level of like understanding of, and if not like how it used to be, how it was portrayed, how it used to be. Yeah. He must be royalty. He's not dirty. He's not covered in shit. Well, right, well, I think that covers it for this week. That's why I'm royalty, at least right now. <laughs> <laughs> is that a threat? Um, whose pick is it next week? Is it mine? It's Brendan. Oh, shit, it is. Um, I so I maybe have a pick, but I don't know how available the movie's gonna be to us. I kind of want to watch Shyamalan's new movie, Old, because I have no idea if it's gonna be good or bad. Well, it's this is. New is so. it going to end up being unintended comedy week continue <laughs> i don't know well i heard his last movie the visit was actually kind of good i didn't see it so i don't know how true that is but the visit isn't that about Hold up, it's, up. it's about kids going to their grandparents no that was bad again i thought it was haven't bad. seen it so couldn't tell you 68 on rotten tomatoes three out of five common sense 6.2 imdb that's better than some of his movies, <laughs> to be it fair. It is, Wait, but it's yeah, I mean, great. Some of his movies are like seven, negative. Um, <laughs> so we might do that depending on 
availability of watching. If not, I'll have to pick something else. I don't really have something in mind. So that'll be it. That'll be. So thanks for listening. Bye. Ah.